Hey folks, it's Pat here. Um, got a chapter six question uh, request from a student, and that's a discrete probability distribution word problems. Um, these are really easy once you actually know what you're looking at. So, you know, I know the explanation is a little bit like, uh, what am I trying to do? But once you've actually seen one or two of these, um, anything with discrete probability, just remember it's 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 always going to be like fundamentally, what are the chances of something happening? Okay. And so as long as you can identify those two pieces of information that you need, number one, what can happen? And number two, what's the possibility of any one of those things individually happening? All the discrete probability distribution problems are actually going to make a lot more sense. And so these ones here, um, most of them have to do with like either coin flips or the number of girls and boys or something like that all right so but the only two things that you need to look at is number one um, what are our possible outcomes okay and so in this one we're flipping coins so we're flipping three coins and so we have uh, the possibility of having heads tails heads 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 tails heads tails tails blah 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 okay <laughs> and then so what it's doing is it's assigning a value to each one of these all right now that value could be like something real it could be something arbitrary don't worry about that too much but um, this value of X is basically just the, the assigned value of whatever this combination is right here. And so that's all it's asking for right here. All right. So what are our possible outcomes? All right. Well, our, our, we got a negative nine in there. And so do these in order. Um, and then we've got a negative three. So that's possible, too. And then we also have a negative one. All right. And so those are our possibilities. All right. Now we just have to calculate the chances of each one of those happening. And it's going to ask us to do that in, in a fractional format. So there's eight total possibles, uh, possible outcomes. One, two, three, four, but eight. <laughs> all right. And so all of these are going to be something out of eight. And then, of course, we're going to have to reduce down that fraction. OK, so nine. We only have one possible uh, value of nine on here. And so that's going to be one out of eight. OK, so because it only occurs one time. All right, threes. We have one, two, three, four. So that's four out of eight, which as a fraction reduces down to one half or 50 50 chances that we would actually get this value right here. Whenever it's talking about value x of x, that's what it's talking about. It's like, what, what is the actual value assigned to the outcome? Okay. And then, of course, negative one, we have one, two, three of those. And so that's going to be three eighths. Of course, three is a prime number. We can't reduce that down anymore. And always double check these and make sure all of these fractions add up to one. Okay, so let's take a look. And ta-da, we got that one right. Um, so all the problems in this chapter are kind of like that. All you have to do here, we'll take another look at another one here real quick. Here's a boy, girl, boy one. Okay, just take a look at your possible outcomes with two different ones. It's eight. And then so there's eight combinations out there. And then these are the values that they've assigned to each one of those. So let's see, we've got a... Uh, negative three, uh, right there. We've got negative twos, and then we've got positive one. Okay, so negative three happens one, two, three times. So that's three out of eight. Negative two happens one, two, three, four times. So that's one half, or four out of eight. And then positive one only happens once, and so we've got one out of eight. And they really are that easy, okay? So, but again, once you understand what you're looking at and, you know, just the number of possible outcomes is, is the first thing you should look for and then assigning values to the probability of any one of those individual outcomes occurring, that's the second part. All the, prino all the binomial problems kind of work like that. So if you get this one right, a lot of the other ones will make much more sense to you down the road. Anyway, I hope that helps. If you have any questions, ping me. Otherwise, um, we'll see you in the next video. Take care now.